The Titan submersible imploded in the North Atlantic back in June 2023, but the controversy continues. The newest wrinkle? A lawsuit that claims OceanGate knew something was wrong. The family of Paul-Henri Narjule, one of the five people who died in the submersible when it imploded, has filed a wrongful death lawsuit claiming that the final moments of the people on board were filled with terror and mental anguish. Narjule was a titanic enthusiast who took part in 37 dives to the side of the sunken ship. The lawsuit states that it was his world record number of dives that made him one of the world's foremost experts on the Titanic wreckage. They, uh, they call him Mr. Titanic, Monsieur Titanic. So, uh, yeah, he's well known around the world for his uh, efforts to explore. His family's lawyers are alleging that the company that operated the submersible, OceanGate, had prior knowledge of the Titan's flaws and shortcomings that were, quote, not disclosed and were purposely concealed. The suit seeks $50 million in damages for carelessness, recklessness, and negligence, specifically alleging that crucial information regarding the Titan's unconventional design. The suit claims that OceanGate did not disclose that the submersible relied on constant power and the presence of a wireless signal for its controls and gauges. OceanGate, which has suspended all operations since the implosion, has declined to comment to the press about the suit, but the company will have to respond in court in King County, Washington within 20 days of the suit's August 6, 2024 filing. The suit draws attention to aspects of the Titan submersible's design and construction that it alleges should have been disclosed to people who went on expeditions. The suit specifically points the finger at OceanGate co-founder Stockton Rush, who also died in the implosion, accusing him of negligence and covering up inconvenient information. The suit states, Rush had an obsession with being remembered for innovation alongside such luminaries as Steve Jobs and Elon Musk. The suit alleges that this obsession led to a disregard for accepted standards of safety, one of the reasons the sub may have been doomed to fail. Court documents also describe the futile terror the passengers may have experienced in the final minutes of their lives, stating, "...common sense dictates that the crew were well aware they were going to die before dying. By experts' reckoning, they would have continued to descend in full knowledge of the vessel's irreversible failures, experiencing terror and mental anguish prior to the Titan ultimately imploding." The Titan dropped weights about 90 minutes into its dive, indicating the team had aborted or attempted to abort the dive. The submersible's design, including its tech system, proved to be controversial even before the tragic accident. The Titan's hull was constructed of carbon fiber that crumpled during the implosion rather than the titanium normally used for submersibles, a decision the suit alleges came about because Rush, quote, believed the titanium was unnecessarily heavy. Rush had allegedly recognized that the carbon fiber could break down, adding an acoustic detection system for safety. In a particularly pointed section, the suit claims Rush was angered by OceanGate's head of marine operations after he asked for a comprehensive scan of the carbon fiber hull for the purpose of filing a safety report, ultimately firing the safety chief. Previous leaks painted a similar picture of a disregard for safety. The submersible's tech also drew considerable attention due in part to the company's decision to use a Logitech F710 gamepad to power its control system. The controller retails for less than $50 and runs on two AA batteries. The Narjale family's lawsuit takes aim at OceanGate's use of technology, calling the submersible's implementation a hip contemporary wireless electronic system that required a constant source of power and wireless signal. As revealed by CBS reporter David Pogue in 2022, the vessel used just a single button to turn it on. The reporter had also described a navigation system that relied partially on text messages from the surface to locate the Titanic wreckage.